GPU prices are falling faster than you can sneeze a turtle's biscuit. Audacity, a well-known program, might be spyware, and AMD's FSR comes to your favorite game. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. We're gonna be starting off talking about GPU prices and how they are on the decline, at least according to consumer-facing data that people can find at different retailers. In yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how server pricing likely is going to start increasing on the CPU side, especially with lead times being anywhere from 52 to 70 weeks, depending on the component that they need for servers. According to a report by 3D Center, it looks like both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs have seen sharp declines in pricing in Germany over the last two weeks. Currently, they're sitting at 53% more than MSRP, which does sound like a lot, but it's nowhere near the all-time highs that they were sitting at in mid-May. As you can see here, the prices are continuing to plunge with them being at the lowest price points since February. January was slightly cheaper for NVIDIA GPU sitting at 127%, but GPU pricing continuing to come down. You can see here that at one point, 3090s were selling at nearly 4,000 euro, whereas now currently they're anywhere from 1932 to 3,000 euro. 53% above MSRP is too much for a lot of people, but the price does seem to be trending in the direction that a lot of people are looking towards. And this is adding on to anecdotal reports where I've been hearing of people People going to micro centers and seeing them just have GPUs in stock. The pricing is still too high, but the cards are sitting on the shelves, which either means that nobody wants to buy them or they don't want to buy them at the price that they're at or that supply has increased. So we're going to see that this price slide might continue. What do you think of the GPU price decrease? Let me know down in the comments, but I'll tell you what's not decreasing in price, especially with our move up to Pennsylvania, and that is meat pricing. Oh my gosh, we went to the local grocery store and holy crap was meat so expensive, which is why I'm so thankful for today's episode sponsor, ButcherBox. My friends, ButcherBox delivers meat straight to your door. They have 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood, and they want to make sure that it's more than affordable at less than $6 per meal. High-quality meat that's shipped for free with the box perfectly packed and portioned for your needs with different boxes that you can choose from as well as customize your own. And currently, right now, ButcherBox is running a promotion where you can get free bacon for life in every single box as long as you stay with them if you use our link in the video description to sign up. We are just continuing our butcher box subscription from Florida. It's getting delivered here to our Pennsylvania address and it's saving us so much money. Holy crap. And it's just so convenient. We just switched our address with butcher box and now we're going to get our meat delivered here. It's amazing. So check out butcher box, get free bacon for life at the link in the video description. And also at the link in the video description, you might be able to get some NVIDIA DLSS repositories because tech power up is now going to be hosting some of these DLSS libraries after it was discovered that they're kind of user configurable. If you take someone else's DLSS DLL and install it into your game, you can get different features and different optimizations that are going on with DLSS. And so instead of having people go to mega download sites or peer to peer so that there could potentially be an issue with malware, they're hosting it on their website directly. We'll leave a link in the video description for that. And in case that was kind of confusing, DLSS, DLLs, let's talk about something else that was confusing, which was this AMD APU, which a lot of people were saying was the Xbox Series X. Well, it turns out after somebody got their hands on this kit, turns out that the 4700S from AMD is not an Xbox Series X SOC, but rather it's a PS5 SOC that has been cut down ever so slightly and ships with an RX 550. You can see right here that it beats the 11700 plus integrated graphics in certain scenarios, which is okay, and 4700S plus RX 550. As long as the pricing's fine, this is a good idea, but you're gonna get a PS5, not a Series X, so you get the slower of the two new generations of consoles, which you should have thought about before you bought it, which you should have thought about that before you bought some crypto stonks. Let's get into the crypto stonk update. <laughs> Bitcoin down 3.75% as of the time of filming to $34,000. It had an early morning slap in the face, dropping a few hundred dollars to slightly recover just after lunch. Ethereum also down 4.5% to 2,200 bucks and Dogecoin down 5.4% to be just under 24 cents. GameStop, the meme stunk down 0.75% on the day, not looking too great at 202.83 and AMC down 4% on the day to close at 51.96. 
stocks. Meme stocks continuing to be worth a lot. And you know what else is worth a lot? Amazon, but they have a new CEO. Officially, as of yesterday, Andy Jassy officially taking over from Jeff Bezos, who resigned 27 years after founding Amazon back in 1994 on July 5th itself. New CEO in charge of Amazon. Jeff Bezos still a part of it, at least until he gets banned from coming back to Earth because people are signing a petition to make sure that he doesn't return once he goes up in his rocket. And Porsche trying to make sure that you don't return home if you bought one of their Taycan EVs because they just lose power, which has led to a lot of crashes, according to this report. So Porsche is recalling all 43,000 of the Taycan EVs that they initially sold. By recall, they just mean that you have to take it into a Porsche dealership and have them do a software update for you because they don't do that over the air at this point, like a lot of other electric vehicle companies do. The sudden power loss in the EV has been reported by nine different cars in the United States, with six of them refusing to restart. And Autoblog has noted that Porsche has found the problem in 130 cars in their own investigation. So in case you own a Porsche Taycan and you're watching this channel, what are you doing here? Go recall it. Go, go get it fixed and beg Porsche for over the air software updates. It's 2021, this should be standard on all cars. And it should be standard that you shouldn't have to deal with spyware. But a well-known piece of software, Audacity, was bought by new owners. And a lot of people are crying out saying that it is now spyware because they asked for new telemetry data that they weren't previously asking for. The company that acquired Audacity is known by Muse Group, and they've changed a few things in the terms and conditions about the application, saying that they want data on the user's country based on their IP address, non-fatal error codes and messages, crash reports, and the processor that's in use. With the company saying, that the data that's being collected is for legal enforcement and that data necessary for law enforcement litigation authorities request, if any. So a lot of people calling out the new company that's owning Audacity for wanting data that they shouldn't have to otherwise provide. I've seen a lot of discussion taking place around this, with the one side just calling them out for it, with the other side saying that this is an opt-in program, number one, but then number two, it also is just asking for very basic telemetry data, the IP address thing, they only store it for a day to find out your country and then they get it off their servers with them disclosing exactly how they're using it. But things such as what CPU you're using as well as non-fatal error codes is pretty par for the course when it comes to software. But again, it's opt-in. So which side of the camp do you fall on? Do you think Audacity is spyware? Let me know down below in the comments. And a lot of people let Microsoft know that they didn't like that they're not going to support just like the most basic CPUs that have come out in recent years, such as first generation Ryzen or the seventh gen of Intel's core or CPUs? Well, Microsoft has come out with a statement saying that as the Windows 11 is rolling out to insiders, they're doing security testing to see whether or not Zen 1 and the 7th generation Intel CPUs are actually good enough to run on the secure platform that Microsoft is trying to turn Windows 11 into. So there might be some hope if you're sitting on first gen Ryzen, like some sort of pleb, or you're on like a 3770K, right? Like, who are you? Why are, you, why are you trying to run Windows 11? Stay in the Windows 7 era, my friends. Don't upgrade. It's terrible here in the future. And power colors live in the future because they're disclosing their 6600 and 6600 XT on their website before AMD has officially announced anything. They're not showing pictures or really much besides listing numbers. That's the update. And there's an update that's come out to Grand Theft Auto V, not courtesy of Rockstar, but rather a modder who has put AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution into the game. But taking the pre-compiled shader binary from a different FSR game and then injecting that into GTA V, they have been able to get FSR to run on GTA V. This video here showing FSR versus the native scaling that's currently in the game. Don't expect to see any performance increase from this comparison because they're not comparing native to FSR, but rather comparing one form of scaling to another, you can see that FSR is indeed sharper than the native scaling that's happening in GTA 5. And you can download the GitHub repository at the link in the video description. What do you think of GTA 5 getting FSR? It does seem like if modders can just put this into games, we might see more mass adoption than what we otherwise were thinking with game devs being able to do this quite quickly. And I quickly suggest that you go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News, where we talk about the chip short shortage getting worse in server environments, which could potentially impact you in the future. Maybe not on the GPU pricing side, but maybe on the CPU pricing side. Go check that out and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode, my friends. Cheers.